Today's guest was one of Europe's first, if not the first, professional pet photographer. She started her business 12 years ago, doing what most of you are doing today, selling digital-only packages at unsustainable prices. She quickly realized that in order to put food on her table, something had to change. After reaching out to newborn photographers all around the world, she learned what worked for them and uh, started doing the same. She introduced albums, wall art, and other products too, and when she did, her clients thanked her. Welcome to the Pet Photographers Club. Tune in as experts share their insights to help grow your business with higher sales, creative marketing, and kick arse business strategies. Now on to the show. Hello, and welcome to the Pet Photographers Club. I'm Kirsty McConnell, and today I'm chatting with Marika Conrad of Marika Conrad Photography in Germany. Welcome to the club, Marika. Hi, good to be here. <laughs> I stumbled then on introducing you with your business name. Maybe you, because because of some changes going on at the moment, so maybe you can give the listener a bit of an introduction of uh, who you are, where you're based in the world, and uh, a bit of an overview of your photography journey. Okay, yeah, I can do this. So um, my name is Marike. I'm 34 years old at the moment and I'm photographing for almost 12 years, dogs only. <laughs> so my journey started with dog photography. Um, it was kind of a hobby during being a student. And um, yes, one day I just started to take money from that and I quickly knew that this is going to be a business. So um, I went full time two years after that. And uh, so this really, really changed my life and I love it. So I'm a professional pet photographer in Germany now based in the East in Germany, so in Leipzig. And yes, I guess and I probably was one of the first full time pet photographers in Germany. And uh, yeah, this is where my journey started. And I could never, ever, ever imagine doing something else because I really love it. I'm um, I'm shooting outdoors only. So um, I'm, yeah, I do this very kind of natural, authentic, um, colorful, vibrant images um, of dogs and their people. So this is, yeah what I specialized in mm -hmm. and um, yeah I also specialized in selling products so this is kind of what we're here today I guess <laughs> definitely and, <laughs> yeah yeah I also was one of the first ones really selling products with pet photography and um, yeah never could imagine doing anything else I love it I really love it my clients do love it and yeah this is what I'm very, very passionate for. So, Marika, you just said um, you were most likely the first in Germany. I would argue probably in mainland Europe, in fact. I mean, mm -hmm. I haven't seen any other photographer. So this was 10 years ago. So for the listener who maybe you're in a country where you're one of the first or it's still developing there, I mean, Marika, you can really relate you know, to that photographer who, who is trying to push the genre yes. there. Me too, because it was the same in Australia when I was there <laughs> 10 years ago as well. <laughs> How old are we? <laughs> okay, so not only did you start an entire genre, basically, in, a, in mm -hmm. Germany and or in mainland Europe, but also you introduced product to those clients who... Well, I guess they didn't really know another way. They only knew what you were offering because there was no other pet photographer, right? Or did you have clients that were coming to you, you know, you know they'd already had a wedding photographer or they'd already had newborn photos or something like that. And so they had a bit of an idea how photography works in whatever version they'd experienced. What was kind of, what did it look like 10 years ago for you? Um, no, it wasn't like uh, the clients are asking for that. <laughs> it's just... I was offering what all the others were offering. So it's like 
maybe everybody is in kind of the same situation. So when you're offering pair photography, it's like, oh, just I want to look what the others are doing and maybe um, take the same prices as them and do some kind of packaging. And um, yeah, this was what I was doing also. So and then one day I just sat down and thought this, this won't work. There won't ever be enough money to pay me for what I'm doing here. And so this was when I uh, reached out to, to other photographers and I just found the concept of IPS and selling products um, with newborn uh, from other newborn photographers and something like this in America and Australia. And so this was kind of um, interesting for me. And I just thought about what in the hell are they doing and why does anybody pay them five thousand dollars for a photography shoot <laughs> so um this was the way it started and um i just was so jealous i just wanted to also get on the train and sell products <laughs> and make make money from that because i was very really passionate about it my clients loved what i'm doing they were always over the moon with their pictures but i wasn't when it came to um, being paid. So it's just, it was just slow. So this was the only option I had for me because I also wanted to go full time. And yeah, then I stumbled over that and I just tried and I tried and I tried and I tried and I started to sell products and I did everything I, I, I can And I offered them everything I had <laughs> and they just loved it. They just loved it. And uh, yeah, so this was when I, when it all started. So I, just to, to recap, I knew that I could never go full time with the amount of money I'm, um, I, I charged at this moment 10 years ago. So this was when I just looked, what can I do different? And then I found products. And I fell in love. <laughs> and my clients did also. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's fast forward. So actually, first of all, 10 years ago, you were selling then what, when you very first started, just digital files. Is that what you were set up in the, the very beginning? Uh, yeah, you know, in Germany, things are kind of different. I don't know when it started and who did start this thing, selling floppy prints and kind of small prints with the digitals. Um, this is kind of a thing in Germany, I guess. I have never seen this anywhere else. And maybe did you, did you do in uh, Australia? There was a period, I don't know if they're still doing it, where wedding photographers, at least in Australia, were doing the same thing. They were selling you know you would get like 50 prints like little you mean like little five by seven or six by four mm -hmm. like prints right yeah they were giving they were just giving those with anybody that bought a certain number of digital files I guess something like that and it was like they were saying well this is what your prints are supposed to look like that was the idea yeah I actually tried it myself <laughs> like maybe I don't know why because my system was working well <laughs> and I was selling oh. framed wall art and everything and then I decided to change it I was like well all these people are giving these small prints with um with the digital collection so maybe I should be doing that and I introduced no. it and straight away I was like oh this is a mistake and I went straight back to my old price <laughs> tell so, me about your experience with uh, with this Yeah, it's kind of the same. So I just did it because everybody was doing this. So I just thought it's just, just the way it is. And so I had free packages, like nearly everybody does. Mm -hmm. um, a small one, a bigger one, and a, a very big one. So uh, do we have to talk about numbers? It, it was kind of um, 69 euro and 89 and 129 so it was very, very, very low. <laughs> so hang on a minute. And we do the maths on that and we say, okay, let's say like, you know, everybody bought the 89 package. If you had 100 clients a year, that's two a week, you'd only be making 8,900 euro. And so you would have had to shoot like more than 1,000 clients a year to make like a livable wage because you still have costs and everything, right? I mean, that's not sustainable. <laughs> Hello, burnout. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so um, this was what I was doing because everybody did this. And uh, I see this um, today also 
much of most of the time when um, people are coming to me for coaching, um, this is what I found: free packages with some digitals, and they include the prints in it for free, <laughs> of course, for free. Uh -huh. Why not? And uh, so this was what I'm doing also, and yeah. <laughs> It wasn't working, I guess. <laughs> no, well, it was working. I had clients and they were over the moon. They were very happy with it, uh, but I wasn't. It wasn't working for me because I wanted to go full time. And also, um, I realized they they never did anything with this kind of friends. Mm -hmm. So why just give them give something to them they don't really want and offer them prints for free, what just keeps them away from asking for prints or um yeah buying prints well, from me you're kind of telling the client aren't you like this is what a photo shoot yes. is for when you give them these little prints you know then yes. they don't even have another idea in their head of what they could do it's interesting how you you know we all come to these not all but a lot of us come to these conclusions through through only experience you know I mean <laughs> I'm thinking my comparison <clears throat> is that back in like when I first started the first maybe three or four three years I would say I would sell wall art so like a 20 by 30 inch um print but not framed and not matted so it was just a loose uh 20 by 30 inch print and they would pay a lot of money for that and I thought I was doing the right thing you know because I was making it was profitable for me the client was getting this beautiful print big enough for their wall I thought it was a great idea until I had a repeat client come back in the next year and I asked her, where did you hang the, the photo from last year? And she's like, oh, no, it's still rolled up in the cylinder because oh, I no. haven't had time for the framers yet. And I said to her, you paid $1,000 for the print and it's still rolled up in your office and you're having another shoot, but you haven't even framed the first one. This was at her ordering appointment of the second shoot, actually. <laughs> And, um, and she was like, yeah, I said, okay, scrap the price list you're looking at right now. You're not buying anything unless the frame is included. And as a bonus, I'm going to frame that last one as well. And she was like, okay. And <laughs> literally with her, I changed my price list. Um, I, I um, added like you could only get something big if it was framed or canvas. And then I took her print with me when I left and I took it to the framers and um, and I delivered both back to her, the one from the previous year and that one. And after that, never again could you buy loose prints from me that were big for the wall. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah. But you have to learn, you know, you have to, you either hear that, like that's why I'm sharing this story now, you know, you hear somebody else had the realisation and they've shared it or you have to have it yourself. So so for you, uh, Marika, you you realised, okay, these little loose prints are not what the client wants. The digitals aren't really either. And so yeah. at that point, that's when you found product, right? Definitely. But nobody ever complained about it. <laughs> nobody will ever. You just have to take that step <laughs> as a photographer. Nobody yeah. will ever come to you and say, oh, no. Well, the print is already rolled up. I I don't like it. <laughs> so, <laughs> nobody would do that because they are nice people. <laughs> we have, right. we, yeah, we have the, the most perfect clients. So, um, yeah, you just have to do it on your own as a photographer. Think about it. Think about what they want, what they really want, and if you are doing a good job at it. So if we fast forward to today... 10 years ago, you started out, you did these three packages, 69, 89, 100 and something euro digital files and these floppy prints. Like, that's okay. I'd say most people can relate to that. And after a little bit, you realize that's not sustainable. So you change your business model. At that point, is that the model that you still use today? Yeah, kind of. It, it developed. It definitely developed. And uh, I changed my process because my uh, life changed in the last years so mm -hmm. um it kind of flipped up and down and yeah i i really would say it, it's the same system mm -hmm. so i i collect um a shooting um how do you call it <laughs> sorry a shooting fee mm -hmm. and the session fee and after that we just sell products and um, this is what, I, what I'm using now, but I changed the, the whole system within and the whole workflow many, many, many times. So um, I just tried everything <laughs> I, I found on the market and um, tried it out and looked what was the best thing for me to do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 
today you're still doing that. You take the session fee, then people mm-hmm. buy the product from you yes. and it's working super well for you. I know that. <laughs> Um, so can you give us an indication, Maraka, how many clients did you shoot last year? Oh, well, last year, um, I had a baby, so it wasn't that oh, yeah, much, sorry, wrong year. but I, but I have to, I have to recap. It was, uh, 35 clients only. Okay. And on a typical year, like the year before, well, I guess you were pregnant, but <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I was pregnant uh, the whole last year, so I have three kids now. Um, but I don't want to shoot that much clients anymore. So for me, it's totally okay to have four clients a month. Okay, perfect. Then. That's great. Let's stick with that because I feel like a lot of the listener would also be happy with that number as well, whether it's because mm-hmm. they're doing it on the side of a, another job or yeah. because maybe they're actually, you know, this is kind of a, a semi-retirement or because they just want high sales and low volume. That's fine as well. So I'm going to break in a second so that we can keep some great details of this in particular for the members. But just before we do that, would you be happy to give an indication of what your average spend is, Marika? Yes, my average client spends uh, between uh, one, nine and two and a half thousand euro with me. Okay, so I'm just going to go back to those numbers earlier. So now let's say the average is 2200 and you're doing 35 a year. So 77,000. Before, with your old numbers 10 years ago, you would have had to shoot 1,000 clients for the same money. <laughs> yeah. And then shoot for 35. So that's like a big, big difference. I know, like, I mean, I'm not really comparing apples and apples because you have, you know, costs and everything, of course, but just a... Uh, it's still interesting to hear those numbers. I mean, 35 versus 1,000, that's a big difference. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yes. I want to go into this a little bit further into exactly what products are selling the best for you at the moment and all of this kind of nitty-gritty a little bit more, but I'm going to save that for the second half of this episode, which is for the members only. So let's wrap up part one, but before we do that, can you just let the listener know where the best place is to find out more about you and um, what it is you offer for photographers as well? <laughs> so well, you can just find me on my website. I guess you put it in the show notes. So you can find me at Marika slash, oh, no. Marika? Dash. 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 <laughs> no, you just you just put it into the show notes. <laughs> so um, yeah, you can find my photography in um, page in there. And yes, I'm offering many things for photographers now. I'm teaching since 2015. I was doing some kind of uh, one-on-one coaching and developed from then. So um, my own academy will go live in April. And you can find it um, in the show notes as well. So because I don't want to drop the name now, it's a kind of a real big thing for me, just launching my um, own academy. So this will be great. Um, but you can find me on my Instagram, Marika Conrad. And uh, yeah, I guess you find me everything, er- everywhere. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> I will put all of the links uh, in, the, in the show notes for sure. But for the website, it's marika-conrad.de. Uh, but I will put the link in uh, the show notes as well as link to Instagram as well. If you're coming to the retreat in April, you'll get to hang out in person with Maraca. Um, yeah. Otherwise, um, I'm sure there's lots of other places that you can learn from Maraca in uh, in months to come because exciting times ahead for you, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> So that's it for part one of this episode. If you are a member of the club, of course, you can continue listening to part two in the member zone or via your private RSS feed in your favorite podcast player. Don't forget, if you're not a member yet, you can join today. It's just $10 a month. Club membership includes tons of perks and bonus content. So head on over to the petphotographersclub.com to find out more. Thanks for listening to the Pet Photographers Club. To subscribe to the podcast, check out other episodes, and keep up to date, head to thepetphotographersclub.com.